Good morning everyone. My name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Today is my floss tube number 169. It is Sunday, December 4th. Can you believe we are in December already? We're so close to the end of the year and I just, it just, I don't know, they say, you know, days and weeks go by slow but then the the year flies by and I really feel like that is true because it just, I cannot believe we're so close to the end of the year. Um, I want to say welcome to anybody that is finding my channel for the first time. I hope that you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I have a cat uh, <laughs> banging into my legs at the moment. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is around here. <laughs> Um, if you are one of my um, returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back each week, um, spending this time with me, putting up with my scatteredness and craziness, and um, I appreciate you so much. Um, let's see. I always give kind of a weather report here in Southern California. Oh, here is the baggie, obviously. He does not want to be left out of the video today right? Yeah. Um, he wants to know, I mean, obviously I'm sitting here and I'm talking to the wall. So, I mean, he knows when I do that, what's up. So sometimes he's, uh, he wants to get involved. Yeah. He wants to get involved. Um, so we are, it's not really bright yet today. Um, it's not really overcast either. It's just the sun isn't very strong. Um, we're going to have weather in the low sixties all week. Um, so it's definitely getting into the sort of Southern California winter, um, which means, you know, a little bit cooler weather. I know a lot of you guys, other parts of the States, um, they were telling me on my Zoom call that I crack them up when I'm like, oh, it's cool now. It's in the low 60s. And for you guys where it snows and stuff, when it's in the 60s, you're like, oh, it's a nice warm day. We can like just wear a sweater and go outside. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's the difference. Um, so when it's in the low 60s all week, we feel like, yeah, it's kind of, it's cooled off. Um, so, and then like the weather report, you know, I look on my phone and it constantly has been saying like, oh, we're going to have rain like later in the week. And then by the time it gets that day, it doesn't say that anymore. So um, we've gotten a little bit of rain. Like we get it, we get it more like in the middle of the night. Um, and then it's all wet the next morning, but we don't get a lot of rain. We haven't gotten a lot of rain during the day. Um, my hair all over you. Um, let's see. So yes, yeah, so it's December. So a lot of people have started doing their Flossmas, Vlogmas videos, which I've been watching a bunch of them. Um, it's funny. It seems like the people that I watch all are unboxing the same advent calendar. So I see the same stuff over and over again. Um, which is fine. I don't mind, <laughs> but it's, it's funny to me. Um, we've definitely hit that point in the year where all of a sudden it's like, I want a bunch of candles. Okay. Enough, enough, enough. I want a bunch of candles and tea. And I was having a dilemma because, um, I really did want to start drinking tea. I enjoy tea. Um, I enjoy it more in the cooler weather, either when it's cool or whether when I don't feel well. That's when I really enjoy tea. Um, but I basically went on strike about a year and a half ago, two years, probably around the time the pandemic started. I decided I don't really want to cook anymore. Um, I used to very much enjoy cooking. Um, I'm a good cook, to be quite honest. Um, but I realized that I started enjoying it less and less, especially when it's by, when I'm by myself. Um, the effort involved um, and everything just wasn't worth worth it for me. So, um, in all honesty, I haven't used my oven in I don't want two years now. Um, and I put, I have a gas stove, so I put um, I got these glass plates and I put them over my stove and I been using my stove kind of as an extra counter like pantry space because I have no space really in my kitchen so I have like you know like little bins that have 
snacks and bags of chips and whatever, that kind of stuff. So it is a dilemma though in the winter because how do I boil water for tea or anything? I mean, I have a microwave, but I don't really like boiling water in the microwave. I don't know why. And I don't like doing my tea water that way. But in order to put the kettle on, I have to, first of all, move everything off the stove. Um, and then I can't put anything back until it's cool. It's just a big pain. So I was thinking about it and I went ahead and I spent, um, I think it was $19 and I got an electric kettle and my friend's like, well, electric kettles are pretty much ubiquitous in the, in the United Kingdom. Anyway, everybody has an electric kettle. And, um, and for me, it's like, yeah, so like, I don't use my stove anymore. What I use is I have a toaster oven and I have an, a mini instant pot and a microwave. And that is how I do all my cooking. I basically do things that take 10 minutes to prepare, even the instant pot stuff. Um, and, uh, and that's how I'm doing my cooking. And now I have an electric kettle so I can still make my tea and everything. And my stove is now more of a piece of furniture than an actual usable item, um, which is working out fine for me actually at this, at this point in my life. Um, I still like cooking. Like if I go over to my brother's for a holiday or something and he's cooking, I will definitely help and pitch in. And there's a couple things that I, I've made that the kids really like. So I've done the cooking on that and when we've gone on vacation and stuff, but um, for me at home, I'm definitely a toaster oven kind of girl now and um, doing simpler things um, rather than elaborate cooking. Um, the only thing that I've missed is I haven't made my mom's um, spaghetti sauce in a while, which is kind of one of those all day, you know, simmer it low for the whole day kind of things. And... Um, if I really get to missing it and want to make a batch, then yeah, I'll, I'll pull everything off the stove and go ahead and do it. But, but for right now, I, you know, I ha I'm not really eating pasta anymore because, um, unless I go out or something, but I don't really eat it that much at home because it's not good for me blood sugar wise. So, um, and I still haven't found anything that's really a decent substitute. So I'm fine without the spaghetti sauce for a while. If I really decide I want some, then I have no problem pulling everything apart to make it. But for right now, I guess that whole thing was just to tell you I bought an instant kettle. <sighs> I can get long winded sometimes. Um, so yeah, so I've been into tea and candles. It was candle day this past weekend with um, Bath and Body Works. I swore up and down I wasn't going to buy anything because I actually just bought a few candles from Kohl's. This is one from Kohl's. Um, it's actually a, um, a Scentworks, which I think Scentworks is actually the company that used, that was the parent company of Bath and Body Works and then they broke off. So their candles are still really good. And, um, Kohl's was having such a sale that they were like $5 each. So yeah, when you get like a $25, $30 candle for $5, it's time to buy a couple. So I did that. And then candle day came around from Bath and Body Works and I was like, no, I don't need any candles. No, I don't need any. And somehow I ended up getting four. I don't know how that happened. Um, but I got, you know, my favorites that I can't get anywhere else. Um, I got a frozen lake and I got a uh, Tis the Season because even though I don't celebrate Christmas, I really like that one candle. Um, so anyway, so those are on their way. So I'm into tea and candles right now and, um, and enjoying it. So let's see. Um, we had our Zoom last Sunday. It was really, really a enjoyable afternoon spent stitching with friends. We had a lot of floss tubers on there, you guys. So if you are not a floss tuber, but watch a bunch of floss tube and want to, you know, meet some floss tubers in person, my Zooms are getting to be the place to go um, to, to meet a bunch of different floss tubers. So um, I really, I really appreciate that. I love having, you know, 10 to 12 people on there and um, everybody just has a really nice time, I feel. Well, I have a really nice time. I guess I can't speak for everybody, but um, other people keep coming back. So I guess it's okay. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, relaxing and 
and chill. And so I do recommend um, anybody who's interested to come join me. I don't have anything scheduled for during the month of December because of Flossnica coming up in all of the December stuff um, and the videos that I'm going to try and get filmed. Like I do want to do my whip parade at the end of the year and I want to do a finished parade to post at the beginning of January. Um, so that does take up some of my time. And then I have Flossnica, which is going to be a full week of videos that are going to be um, done. So I don't have a lot of extra time to have a Zoom, but I do have one scheduled, excuse me, for New Year's Eve. So I'm starting at eight o'clock California time, so Pacific time, um, eight in the evening. And then I will stay on till, you know, everybody's exhausted and wants to leave. Um, I realize that means it's 11 o'clock for people on the East coast. Um, so, you know, if you can join and, you know, aren't celebrating with other people, then please do join. We're, um, I think every bit, well, I don't know if everybody, but I know several people and myself, we're going to do, you know, our new year, new start. We're going to start at new year's Eve, which for me counts, um, as new year, new start. Cause as soon as I'm on that zoom, it's the next year basically. Um, but we'll be able to celebrate, you know, new year's three times. Um, and uh yeah so i'm really looking forward to that and i hope that you can join um even just pop in for a few minutes to say happy new year and that'd be fine but i will be i will be on there for quite a few hours um doing my new year new start so i'm excited about that okay um other oh the other reminder um talking of Flossnica, which I am getting really excited for. I spent a good amount of time yesterday um, doing my notes for each of the eight days, um, kind of reorganizing, looking at what I had last time and um, using that information. Obviously, um, a lot of that is the same, but I also have some new information and some new, a new, new couple subjects to talk about. Um, so I'm really, I'm really getting excited about it and, um, looking forward to, to sharing this information with you and to showing you, you know, my, my Hanukkah menorahs and just all the stuff, all the stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 uh, really looking forward to it. And so, um, part of what I'm going to be doing on the... Flossnica videos, you know, I will be sharing the menorahs with you, lighting the candles with you guys, um, giving you a little bit of Hanukkah trivia or information, however you want to put it, talking about all the different subjects. We're going to talk about the menorahs one night. We'll talk about dreidels. We'll talk about what is Hanukkah. Um, and, uh, I have some really great new information about how Hanukkah is celebrated around the world with different countries and stuff. Some, you know, other things that are done. Um, other than like what we do in the United States, Canada kind of thing. Um, uh, Hanukkah in the U.S., the history of it. And um, yes, yeah, so I have some some great information. I think it's very interesting. Um, also, I will be opening um, a Riolis kit a night to show you guys. They're actually a Hanukkah present to myself. Um, I got with some... Uh, some birthday money so kind of like I got it for myself but kind of they were from other people and um, I just decided to get eight Riolis kits and I got them I mean I know what I ordered kind of but I didn't examine them I just kind of put them in a bag so I will be opening one a night to share with you um, some upcoming you know projects um, and I just decided on all Riolis kits because um, Riolis was the very first cross stitch kit I ever did, or the very first cross stitch anything I ever did was a was a small Riolis kit. So, um, so yeah, so I decided that would be kind of a fun thing to do. And then on the other half of the gift giving, uh, so I'm giving myself a gift every night. Um, but in addition, I want to give something to you guys. So I have mentioned that I will be making custom uh, little golden book journals. Um, for eight people, um, I'm just asking that you mention Golden Book or Golden Book Journal in a comment um, in the videos leading up to Flossnica. So 
Um, probably that day because because the first night of Hanukkah is the 18th, which is a Sunday. So I will be doing a video that day. Um, at that point, I'm going to have the bowl full of names. So I probably am not going to gather any names from that video. So the, my previous two videos and this one and then next week and then is there one more after that? There might be one more after that, or it may actually be Hanukkah. Today's the fourth. Seven plus four is 11. No, so just this week and next week. So put your comments on any of those four videos or all of those four videos, because if you put it in all four, then I will put your name in four times um, to possibly get a custom little golden book journal. Now, as I said each time, I am not giving myself a deadline for these other than I will get them out to the people who win them by next holiday season. So I'm giving myself a year to do these eight <laughs> books because they're time consuming and, um, you know, and I don't work on them all the time. I mean, I will, once I have this obligation, um, I will, but, um, you know, so you're not going to get them right away. And the other thing is, is please be in the U.S. Um, I just, the shipping on a package like that is going to be um, just out of, out of my budget for people who are out of the U.S., even Canada. I was really surprised. Um, I did another giveaway and somebody won from Canada and it's still international post. So I, it was something that I had to get it into just a regular envelope and luckily it was something I could, but um, these I definitely can't because they're books and they have to go in a box. So I was like, what is that noise? It's Baggy <laughs> eating some more breakfast. Um, so yeah, so that's the only, the only, uh, restrictions I have to put on it. And I'm sorry that I do have to have those. Um, I kind of, I feel bad about it, but you know, reality is reality. Um, okay. So, but please do, um, comment in this video or all the videos if you have a particular story or um little gold book that you loved as a kid or anything like that just let me know let me know some other ideas um so that I when I go through my box of books I can start pulling out ones that might work for people um so yeah I'm excited to do that for you guys though um some people have commented that like I should only do four or do a couple because they're just a lot of work and they are a lot of work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat that, but I do enjoy making these things for other people. So for some reason, it doesn't bother me to make little golden book journals for other people. I kind of love it. Um, as opposed to cross stitching, which I will only do for a very select few people because, um, I don't know, there's something about cross stitching. It takes so long and there's so much involved in it, but people who don't know, don't know that. And they're just kind of aren't appreciative of it. So I don't do cross stitch for everybody. I just do cross stitch for a very select few group of people. But for my little golden book journals, I just love doing them for other people and spreading them around in the world. So anyway, don't forget to comment if you're interested. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, I just want to show you guys something kind of silly that I did yesterday. So I felt like I was being extremely um, productive yesterday morning. I got my kitchen reorganized and stuff, some stuff I have to do. I have uh, maintenance coming in this week to, they're doing another like gel pest treatment. Luckily it's just a gel treatment, so I don't have to tear my entire apartment apart. But you know, my apartment's a mess and I need to get it. Um, I need to get it organized. So I was doing a lot of work yesterday and I was actually really proud of my momentum and everything. And then I got a little bit derailed because my best friend said, Hey, do you want to like chat while we're both multitasking? And I was like, sure. But I have to learn that I am not good at, I'm good at multitasking and doing a bunch of stuff. But if I get on the phone or like on a video call or anything like that, I mean, we were just talking on the phone. I get completely derailed and it's not her fault. It's my fault. I just can't do that and, and do other stuff at the same time. So I did get a little bit derailed yesterday, but I got a lot of stuff done in the morning. Um, so that made me happy. But while I was sitting there not talking to her, um, I did this little silly crafty thing 
So one of the things that happened, I don't know why I did this. Honestly, I think it was part of the grieving process or something. When my mom passed away, which was in January of 2021, um, right around that time I got a new phone. Um, and for whatever reason, I was on a phone case, like I couldn't settle on a phone case. I ended up getting like 12 different cases. Um, and I got in my head that I would just switch them out every month and have like a phone case wardrobe. Well, that's all well and good. Um, very, I mean, they were, none of them were expensive cases. They were all like $5 cases or something like that, but still I got a lot of them. And I don't know why. I don't think I do that now. Um, but I just, I just did it. I, I, I can't explain any further than that. So anyway, I have been switching out them out every, um, every month. And of course I can't usually really show them to you because they're on my phone and I, and I, and I film on my phone. So yesterday I realized, okay, it's December and I still had my November case on and my November case that I had on was this one. My phone is yellow. So, which is not what I would normally pick. I, I didn't have a lot of choice at the time. That's what they had. And I didn't want to wait. So I got the yellow one. But anyway, so that was my November case. Cute, right? So I was trying to figure out what do I want for December. And I thought about this one, but I used to like to do this one in May because I do cat mania. And then I have this really cute elephant one, but I like that one in February because I don't know. It's like, it makes, actually I might use this one in January because it makes me think of my mom. And then, you know, so I have all of these cases. Oh, and I have my Halloween one. For October and then I have a couple different floral ones for different months of the year okay so but I was like what am I gonna do in December I don't really have anything that's blue for like Hanukkah um, but I have this like silvery one that kind of flashes rainbow but it was kind of plain and it's a little scratched up and I so I was sitting here and I'm like I guess I could use that one but I was very unthrilled and then, because I was sitting here at my table, I realized, oh, I have all of these, like, glittery stipples. And I can put them on anything. So, I decorated my December phone case. It is very, uh, juvenile. <laughs> but, you know what, I had fun doing it, and it's kind of cute. And, you know, so, that's what I did. I put some... Six pointed stars, very inexpertly. These little gold things are supposed to be dreidels. <laughs> they don't really look like that. And then I put some other little dots and things. So, yes, yeah, so that is what I do when I'm on the phone with my friend. <laughs> and, yeah, I have craft supplies near me. Um, okay, that's enough. That's enough preamble and being silly. Oh, you know what? I didn't even pull my... Okay, I'm so well prepared. I didn't even pull my um, projects. Let's see. This one. And this one. This one. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I'm missing something. Um, I did work on my dog and cats like needlepoint thing um, during the video call last week or the Zoom. Um, but I put it away and I can't reach it where I'm sitting. So I guess we'll show it to you next time. Okay. Let's see. Um, so here, let me get this one because it's taking a photo on here. Ah, I'm going to have a total avalanche. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so sorry. Usually I'm very better prepared than this. Alright, let's put that stuff there. Okay. So I worked on Catnap Faye. 
and I don't know if you guys remember last time I showed it to you I had like almost finished this diagonal but not quite so I did finish that diagonal and then I started on the next diagonal and what I decided to do um because I'm not doing the background on this one I have to reorganize my desk here so badly it's not even funny okay so because I'm not doing the background I'm right in this area and I hit the background right there so I started the diagonal and when I hit this background color I decided I would finish the green part which is kind of like in the next actually next two diagonals um, and then go forward because it, it kind of gets hard to count so at some point I don't know I might go down instead of up um, which will just mean changing the way I park um, to kind of avoid the background area so um, so let me get all the needle minders off of here so I hit the background and then I just went up and I finished the um, leaves and then continued over here with a little bit more of that diagonal. So this diagonal will continue up like that. And then when I start again, you know, it's going to be the wings. But I'm going to have a little chunk out of here that isn't going to be stitched because it's background. If that makes any sense. So I don't know if this is going to be doable to get finished by the end of the year. I don't know. I said that last year with the Lavender Roses too, and I did get it done, but it got to where I was like working on Lavender Roses like three out of the seven days a week, and so far I haven't done that with this one. So we'll see what happens. Um, I kind of have like two or three, you know, slightly bigger projects that I'm trying to get done, so I just, I don't know that they're all, that's all going to happen with all of them. Okay, um... I didn't work on that. That's that's why I had an extra thing. Okay. That's Frog Dancer, but I did work on her this week. Um, I did work on my Autumn Equinox Pixie. She's another one that I was like, I put on my list to get finished, and I just, there's no way. There's no way she's going to get done before the end of the year. Um, but I did... I worked on this a lot in the skirt, actually. All of these darker stitches are new in this whole green uh, tendril of her leafy part. So she is just so beautiful. I was well, I was on Facebook, kind of trolling around, and. Um, there is a Bella Filipina group and a bunch of people um, on the group were like asking the designer to make more men um, projects, which would be kind of cool. But for me, I want him to make the spring equivalent of this. I know there's Hummingbird Pixie. Maybe that's who he intends to be the companion, but I think she's cute. She, I, she just didn't speak to me as much as this one did, but if she got a, a companion, a spring equinox pixie, that would be excellent. Um, okay, next, um, I did work a little bit on the autumn chipmunk for my friend Tracy. Um, this is a kitty and me design, and Stacy stitched the chipmunk. So I stitched a couple of the leaves. Um, after I got the pattern and then I gave it to Stacy for several weeks and she did the chipmunk and then she gave it back to me to finish the leaves and the sunflower um, and the leaves I'm I'm stitching the leaves in silks so I just pulled my own and some of them are highly variegated so I'm not following I'm kind of following the pattern um, to know where to kind of like change the colors in the variegation if that makes any sense 
but um but I'm I'm kind of winging it as far as the leaves go so yesterday I did this green one this is not the highly variegated these are this is five or six different green flosses um but I did that and then I did the back stitching and I, I pretty much finished the back stitching on the sunflower I think there's a couple yellow stitches up here by his mouth I think that um are missing that I need to fill in but you can see I'm kind of using these variegated silks for the leaves so I just need to finish that and Stacy didn't do any of the back stitching on the chipmunk so I think there's a little bit more on that to do and this is on a damask Ada which I normally really like but this one I don't know if I normally when I do damask Ada I'm doing it on a smaller or higher count um, like I'm doing the frog dancer on one but I'm doing it on 18 count and this I think is 14 and I don't know it's behaving a little bit weird um, it I don't know partly maybe it's from putting in the hoop and it gets a little too tight I don't know uh, like pulled too tight but I don't know the fabric is behaving a little bit a little bit weird a little bit like too floppy maybe I don't know I mean it still looks great and I know this uh, Tracy's gonna love it okay sweet william now this one is going to be done by the end of the year come come hell or high water this is going to be done um i mean i have eight new riolas kits so i have to get this one done so i can start on another one um this is sweet william by riolas this is done with the acrylic and wool fiber and I am pretty close I'm pretty close to finish I mean I've been saying that every week but I did this little flower and all of this greenery this week just so rich the colors are so rich um, I really like this one. Very pretty. And it, it is always amazing to me when I hold it up or when I hold it back, you know, and I, I view it from further away than, than you do when you're stitching on it. How, how 3D it looks, how the flowers just really kind of pop, um, pop off the fabric. You know, when you're stitching it, and you're up close it it just looks kind of like okay you're outlining with this color and you've got blobs of this color but then you hold it up or you hold it back like you should when you're viewing stuff like this and it just is three-dimensional it's really pretty amazing and then last but not least I worked on peace and light which I really want to get done not even for the end of the year, I'd like to get it done before the first night of Hanukkah, so that only gives me a couple weeks. And this is by uh, Jody Rice, Satsuma Street, the Partridge Family Menorah. It's not called that. I call it that. so mad at myself with the where I put this on the fabric I was so wasteful and I have no idea why I did it I guess I was just being lazy because it's not that big and I could have really moved it over and had almost half of this fabric left to use and I mean I still will but I'll have two little strips it's it's so wasteful and I just I'm so mad at myself that I did that but there's nothing I can do about it now Okay, so, um, continuing to kind of pull the candles over, um, I did the, the light color on all of them, 
and so this little sliver is all new and I did the the foot the base so yeah I think I will be able to get this done um, it might require an you know like two days a week instead of one day a week but I should be able to get it done I don't think be FFO'd, but you know what? It'll be there on the table to be admired during the Festival of Lights. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So this fabric, I've said this a bunch of times, I dyed this myself. This was a reject uh, fabric from when I was trying to dye fabric for the... Um, Enchantress of the Abyss and I had a very specific idea in mind of what I wanted for Enchantress of the Abyss and I wanted it to be dark and this is a Lugana and the Lugana just wouldn't take the dye uh, dark enough it it was perfect wet it was exactly what I wanted when it was wet and of course I tried and it you know uh, lightened up to sort of this denim bluey green color there is green in here um, which I think it's very, very pretty. It's actually prettier in real life than it, it shows up on camera a little bit gray. Um, but I noticed that all of my purples and blues and stuff kind of gray out a little bit when I show them, but, um, it, it's very pretty. It just wasn't what I wanted for, uh, for Enchantress of the Abyss, but then it was perfect for Peace and Light, so. Okay, and that is all of my whips for the week. Um, let's see, haul. I do have one little piece of haul. Um, I got this from eBay. Um, oh, they gave me a needle too. That's nice. Um, this is a 32 count uh, Lugana White Opalescent. Not very exciting really, um, but I got it to dye because um, just like that piece of fabric, I really, I really enjoy dyeing um, the opalescent uh, 32 count. It looks pretty small. And this was like a pretty decent sized piece. Um, so I thought it would be a good thing to have in my stash to dye. Well, I really would like to try and dye something that's very pastel. Like, um, I haven't really done that yet. I don't know. I have some ideas. Um, so anyway, I get white, uh, when I can find a white opalescent Lugana, um, I, I want to get it just because I want to have these pieces to dye. Um, and, uh, it's getting harder to find, you know, um, like, M and I love like the MCG textiles, the ones that were in the package. I really like those regular and the opalescent. Um, so I always look for those on eBay, but again, they're not easy to find. They're, they're getting used up. Um, so anyway, so I just got this as a, as a dyeing piece. Um, I do have a box of fabric separate from my, my bins of fabric that I've shown you guys before. That's all white things that are dyeable. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this fabric to stitch on white. You know, it's not like a scrap piece of fabric it's a good piece of fabric but um but when I get whites like this for the most part I don't like stitching on white um even white opalescent um I have a couple pieces that are on white but they're just not my favorite um so when I get white I put it in my to dye box and um then if I have a project that I just don't have anything in stash that's calling to me, then I will go there. Um, so yeah, that was my haul. Um, plans, um, talking about plans for next year. I mean, this coming week I'm going to be stitching basically the same stuff, trying to get, um, get the stuff done that I would like to be able to check off my whip list. Um, 
but I've been thinking about plans for next year and how I'm going to organize my stitching and stuff. Um, the last couple of years I've tried doing themes and, and it works really well for me at the beginning of the year and then kind of falls off somewhere in the summer. Um, but I, I'm thinking I'm going to try it again. Um, I don't know. Let let me know what you guys think. Um, I was I was wondering if I if I set some themes for next year, if um, any of you guys would join me. Like if my theme is fancy ladies or something like that, would you guys do a fancy lady theme as well? Um, or so right now the themes I have in mind, and they all seem to start with an F. And I don't know why. Um, I have a fancy, I could do fancy ladies because I have several of them that I could stitch on as a focus for the month. Um, I could do a friends and family. Um, when I've done that in the past, that means I pull out all the projects that I basically am stitching for other people or in honor of other people. Um, so I have, you know, like things that are in honor of my mom or in honor of my dad or something that I'm stitching for my brother or, you know, that kind of thing or for my friend. Um, I have a lot of floral pieces or pieces that have flowers on them in some way. Um, so that could be, that could be a theme. Um, obviously, you know, in, in May I've, I've done sort of a cat mania for the last couple years. Um, I know like stitch mania is not like a thing anymore. It's not a, an official group anymore, but I like that as a theme. So, um, I'll stick to that. Um, Gosh knows I have I have a ton of projects with cats on them, um, like even projects that fit into other categories. Like a lot of my fancy ladies, I one of the reasons I like them so much is because there's a cat. Like even Bellatrix, um, this is Bellatrix. Yes, um, Bellatrix has a cat. Yep, so she fits even in the cat thing. I miss her. Maybe I should stitch on her today just because I miss her. Um, she is a, I haven't started even the cat yet. But she's like one of my favorites. I just love her face. Her face is so pretty. So pretty. Um... Yeah, so, like, there's a lot of projects that would fit into the cat theme, even though there are other themes as well. Um, I also have, like, the cat bouquet one, where it's all the flowers and with the cat peeking through. So, you know. Um, let's see. So I have, did I say floral? I have florals. I have fantasy characters. So I have lots of fairies and mermaids and witches and... Um, dragon, my dragon fly, uh, snapdragon, and you know, so those will all fit in a fantasy theme. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> so, when, you know, you could do full coverage. Um, I have, that's another F. Um, I have a couple. Um, even if I get Cat Mount Faye done, I still have my mini flower kitty and my, um, uh, what is the other one I have? The, what's the cat? The white cat. Um, and then I will have, because my new year new start is going to be uh, Pinky and the Blue Boy. So that's two, two uh, charts, but I'm doing them on one piece of fabric. Um, so those are full coverage. Um, so yeah, so I, give me some ideas, you guys, of, of themes. And like, if you would participate with me, um, I will have my, um, February be my own Valentine sal going and I do already have a chart and it's all kitted up. It's it's a companion piece. Last year um, I did this one. Or not last year, this year I did this one. Look at these are all projects that are this is my under the bed box. These are all finished and I haven't done anything with them yet. But this is what I did this year. The the I change you know and I changed the words to fit my channel. Be content, be kind, and be crafty. And then I have another one that goes along with this, I feel. February. Okay. Oh, nice. uh, let's 
see, where is it? Where is it? Because I have it all kitted like, up and in the bag. And. No. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, my. Everything is such a crazy mess right now. No, I didn't think it was in that one. I will have to find it, but I have it already kitted up. Um, my Be My Own Valentine for, for next February. Um, yeah, so anyway, now I'm rambling. Um, so let me know what you think about themes and if there's, you know, if you would join me on themes or anything like that. Um, I also was like thinking like, could I, you know, somehow split up the alphabet and do like, you know, A, A, B, and C in January and D, E, F or something like that in, in February. But then I don't know. I don't know how that would go. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to get some order, you know, put some order to the chaos of the stitching and, um, you know, just... Stuff like that. I'm not a challenge type person. Um, I learned that early on. Um, I don't like challenge groups. I don't like having to account to anybody for what I stitch. Um, so the groups we have to, you know, um, take pictures and send them in and, you know, that kind of thing. That doesn't work for me. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, I have to, you know, I have to make some decisions about what am I going to do in, in January. And I'm leaning towards like the fancy ladies just because I have a lot of them and I haven't, you know, really been touching them in the last couple months because I've been focused on all of the, the trying to get it finished stuff. So, um, if I, if I did the fancy ladies, I have Bellatrix, I have Autumn Equinox Pixie if I don't get her finished. I have the Wind Moon Fairy Dimensions Kit. I have um, Bianca Bella, which I started this year, but I don't have very much done on her. And I have um, the Frog Princess. Um, so, yeah, so I have those at the very least. And then, you know, I could possibly, possibly start another one. I have, I have two others that are kitted up. I have a uh, Florentino, which is a Mirabilia that is all kitted up and ready to go. And I have um, the Poppy Fairy from Joan Elliott, which I've never done to Joan Elliott. And I have her, um, she's not really kitted up per se. Um, I just have all of her stuff in a bag, but I haven't, you know, put them on floss drops and, you know, kitted up to where I can actually do it. Um, but I have all of her stuff. So, I think that's it. I think I'm rambling now and not making a lot of sense. So, um, I, um, hope you guys have a great week. Um, I hope you're enjoying, uh, holiday preparations as we get closer and closer to the holidays. Um, yeah. Um, I just hope that you guys are all doing really well. Um, so don't forget to make a comment if you're interested in the little golden books and, um, and until I see you guys again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.